So what the fundamental theorem of algebra says is if you have a polynomial, whatever its degree is, that's how many solutions it's going to have. Okay, so if it's x cubed, that polynomial should have three solutions. Uh, if it's x to the fifth, that polynomial should have five solutions. Now, they're not always going to be real numbers or whole numbers. They could be fractions. They could be square roots. They could be imaginary or complex numbers. Uh, but you're going to have that many solutions. So, uh, what we're going to start with is we're going to talk about writing a polynomial function. We're going to come up with a function that has these zeros. Okay, we're going to come up with a function that has these zeros. So number seven there says the zeros are five, zero, four, and negative four. So we're going backwards. We have the answers. We got to figure out what the original problem was, which sounds really hard, but it's really not. Because let's say we just worked on solving, right? So solving, we factored, and then we set our factors equal to zero, and that gave us the answer. Well, what happened every time we set a linear factor equal to zero? What happened to the number when we solved it? It changed signs. So if positive five is a zero for our function, then that means as a factor, that is x minus 5. You just change the sign. Okay? Now, I left a gap because one of my answers is 0. So I like that one to go first, and you'll see why here in a second. x minus 0. Well, subtracting 0, does that do anything? No, it doesn't change anything. We really don't need that. Okay? But I wanted to show it to you to start with. Um, and then we've got x minus 4 and x plus 4. If you know the zeros, to put them in factor form, you just change their signs. Okay, but we want the polynomial function, so we want this all multiplied out. We don't want it in, in factored form. We want it all multiplied out. So, as I mentioned a second ago, x minus 0, that's just x. Okay, um, I'm going to leave the x minus 5 here for a second. I'm going to pair the last two together, and I'm going to foil them out. Now, the nice thing about pairing these together, thank you, sir is that x minus 4 times x plus 4 is the factoring of um, the difference perfect squares. Okay? When we multiply x minus 4 times x plus 4, x times x is x squared. x times positive 4 is positive 4x. Negative 4 times x is negative 4x. Those cancel. Plus 4x minus 4x, they cancel. Negative 4 times positive 4 is negative 16. So that's nice. I don't have to multiply by a trinomial. Okay. Now, at this point, you have a choice as to what you multiply next. You could go ahead and distribute that x to the first set of parentheses, but I usually save that for the end. So let's go ahead and FOIL x minus 5 times x squared minus 16. Okay. x times x squared is x cubed. x times negative 16 is negative 16x. Negative 5 times x squared is negative 5x squared, and negative 5 times negative 16 is positive 80. And the last thing that we need to do is distribute that x, so that's x to the fourth, and I'm going to write it in standard form, so I'm going to get the x squared one next, minus 5x cubed, minus 16x squared, plus 80x. Now, we can check this. Okay? We can check this. We're saying this is the original polynomial function. We know what the zeros are supposed to be. So, let's check one. Okay? Let's, uh, let's check five. Oops. Oh, I got it backwards. Five is told as x. There we go. Um, x to the fourth minus 5x cubed minus 16x squared plus 80x it gives us zero. It should, okay, because it is one of our zeros. You could also uh, graph this or type it into your y equals and go to the table and make sure that of those four values, the y value is zero. Okay, so I typed it in, I'm going to my table, 
at 0, I get 0. At 4, I get 0. At 5, I get 0. And let me make sure negative 4 also gives me 0. It does. So that means we wrote it correct. Okay? Number 8. Okay, same deal. We only have three zeros. So this one's just going to be a cubic function. This one's going to be a little bit shorter than the one we just did. Zero is one of our zeros, so that means we have just an x in front. We change the signs. x plus 4, x minus 3. So I'm going to FOIL first and save the x for the end. So x times x is x squared. The outside gives me negative 3x. The inside gives me positive 4x. And multiplying my last two terms, 4 times negative 3 is negative 12. Distribute my x. x times x squared is x cubed. I've got negative 3x plus 4x. That's 1x. So when I multiply that by the x in front, that's x squared. And then x times negative 12 is negative 12x. That is it. When we plug in 0, negative 4, and 3 into that polynomial, we should get 0 every time. All right, let's look at 9 and 10 because they got fractions. Now, let's think through this for a second. We don't want to have to FOIL with fractions because that's kind of yucky. So let's see if we can solve this. All right, so if 5 fourths is one of my zeros, that means x equals 5 fourths was one of my answers. Okay? I gotta work backwards. I gotta get this equal to zero. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start by multiplying both sides by four, because that gets rid of that denominator. So we have four x is equal to five, but we want this to be equal to zero. We don't want it to be equal to five, so how can we make that equal to zero? How can we get rid of that five? Subtract it. So 4x minus 5 is the linear factor that's going to give us an answer of 5 fourths. Okay, and you can check it. Add the 5, divide by 4, 5 fourths. Okay. So 4x minus 5 is our linear factor that gives us that answer. Now, you probably notice that there's this weird thing that says M-U-L-T-2. That means multiplicity 2. It means it's a repeated root. Okay, I think I mentioned this the other day. Um, that's when it hits the x-axis and bounces off. So that means when we're setting up our problem, 4x minus 5 is going to be a factor twice. Okay, 4x minus 5 is going to be a factor twice. Uh, and then we have another zero here. Okay, don't let it get lost there and all the work that I've got around it. Negative one half is one of our answers. I didn't really leave myself much room here, but let's uh, let's work that one out. X is equal to negative one half. To solve that, we would start by multiplying by two. So two x is equal to negative one. We want it to be equal to zero, so we add the one. Two x plus one is the linear factor that would give us an answer of negative one half. So we have a binomial times a binomial times a binomial. You have a choice. There are about three different ways that you can multiply this out, and you should get the same answer regardless of, of how you do it. Um, so personally, I like multiplying out the 4x minus 5 times itself because that's going to, um, that's a perfect square trinomial. So 4x times 4x is 16x squared. The outside gives me negative 20x. The inside gives me negative 20x. So together that gives me negative 40x. And then negative 5 times negative 5 is positive 25. Okay. And then remember when we've got this, we distribute the 2x to everything and then we distribute the 1 to everything. So 2x times 16x squared is 32x cubed. 
2x times negative 40x is negative 80x. 2x times 25 is positive 50x. Then when we distribute the 1, we get negative 40x. Whoops, I skipped. Well, that's 80x squared. I did that yesterday in the other class. My bad. Sorry. Negative 80x squared when we distribute the 2x to the negative 40x. I apologize. Distribute the 1. 16x squared minus 40x plus 25. My bad. Get them all lined up so you can add uh, like terms here. So final answer is 32x cubed minus 64x squared plus 10x plus 25. I would definitely want to check this one just to make sure since I got those uh, fractional zeros. So let me show you another way that you can check these. And I'm typing it into my y equals. Now, this time I can't look at my table because my table has whole numbers and my zeros are fractions. So I'm going to graph it. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do second trace. Have you ever noticed that that first one says value? You press enter, it's going to pop up and say x equals. Well, I can type in a number. 5 over 4, press enter and it tells me that the y is 0, which it should be. Um, and see how it, how the graph comes down, it touches the x-axis and then it starts increasing again. It doesn't actually cross. That's what happens when your zeros have multiplicity. Okay, they're repeated. Um, and then as long as I don't do anything else, I can type in another number and, and I don't have to go back to that menu. Okay, I can type in negative 1 half and see that its y value is also 0. Okay. So that's just another way to check this um, if you're looking for another option. Okay. <clears throat> do y'all want me to do number 10 or do you want to try and do number 10? Do you want to see another one? Okay. Let's see another one. Uh, number 10, we've got negative 1 fifth. So x equals negative 1 fifth. We want to make that equal 0. So we start by multiplying by the denominator. 5x equals negative 1. We want it to be equal to 0, so we got to move that 1. It's negative, so we add it to both sides. 5x plus 1 is equal to 0 is the linear factor that gives us negative 1 fifth as an answer. 3 halves was another one. x equals 3 over 2. Multiply both sides by 2 first. 2x equals 3. We want it to equal 0, so we subtract the 3. 2x minus 3 is our other linear factor. Then we have a third one. Negative 2. x equals negative 2. We want it to equal 0, so we add 2. x plus 2 is our third linear factor. Oh, uh, let's see. I'm going to write, you can write it in any order you want to. For some reason, I favor if the coefficient is 1, if the leading coefficient is 1, I like to put that one first. I don't know why. I just do. Um, and then I'm going to put the 2x minus 3 and the 5x plus 1. Okay, this is the part where it doesn't matter what order you do it in just so you FOIL out everything correctly. So I'm going to FOIL the last two. 2x times 5x, 10x squared. 2x times 1, 2x. Negative 3 times 5x, negative 15x. Negative 3 times 1, negative 3. I'm going to take an extra step here to combine my terms in the middle. If you can do that in one step, that's great. I'm just trying to show a little bit more work than I did last time. Okay, distribute the x to everything. x times 10x squared is 10x cubed. 